Bonjour, everybody. Hi, this is Neshi Lilkatz. Welcome to Star Nation's organization's main fan page in this morning's live stream with the card of the day. Um, I'm smiling because um, <laughs> it's been a it's been a hectic morning here. I usually send out um, a, a cute little picture, you know, usually something to do with coffee or or flowers or something like that to remind everybody that that there is a live stream in the morning with me. And I didn't, I didn't get to it this morning. Um, I, bar I barely had enough time to take a shower. And I was leaving my mom with her morning snack. And uh, she says, are you going up? She calls it going up on the hill. Because the, the academy here is on the hill above my house. And I said, yep, I'm, I'm on my way out the door now. And she, said, she says, it's really busy, huh? And I said, yeah, it is. And she said, did you even feel the water when you took the shower? Because it was so fast, you know, and she made me laugh. That might be, we try to do that every day, at least once a day, um, is to have a really good heartfelt laugh, her and I. Not that it's, you know, contrived or anything like that, but um, that's one of her beliefs is that you should have a good laugh at least once a day. And usually she's the one who who, uh, who is the starter, the instigator of it. And uh, this morning she was she was teasing me about that. So good morning, everybody. Um, could somebody who's in the, the live chat, if you could do me a favor and just r write a short um, comment, um, even if it's just hi, because I don't see anything on the left or the, the right hand side of my screen where, where the comments and stuff should be. Um, and it's, um, I don't know, you know, Facebook changes things all the time and I usually don't find out about it until days, days or even months later. And, uh, and so I'm just double checking to make sure it works or if we have to do something different. <laughs> so this morning, how are you? it's Friday morning, June 15th and, uh, middle of the month, um, coming up on, uh, Father's Day for those who celebrate Father's Day. Um, and we also have, um, another show coming up on Sunday with, uh, my co-host, uh, Mervyn Kelly. He also is the co-host, uh, the host of uh, From Star to Stone here on Star Nations. And, uh, we, we, he and I started this series, um, about caring for elderly parents. We had, uh, we had, uh, um, found out, I think it was in January, that uh, we were both taking care of our moms, taking care of our moms. And so, um, see, I, I'm using my phone, and I see that there's a lot, there's so many messages, and I can't see them on the right-hand side, and I don't know why. See video insights, edit post. Huh, isn't that interesting? I see you guys are there, but I don't see any any of the posts. So I'm going to have to do it to do this. I'm going to have to look at my phone to see what you guys are saying, so that I answer you, and uh, and then you look at the camera too. Oh my gosh, two things at one time. All right, so who's here? Elise is here. Yay! Good morning, Elise. Judy's here. Good morning, Judy and Stephanie. Stephanie, you're here. Thank you so much for coming. And Rochelle. Okay, she's Rochelle says I can only stay a few minutes. That's okay. I'm just glad you're here. And Jill is here. Good morning, Jill. Mary, Mary, hello. Good morning, and good morning to Mary as well. Mary, Elise's sister. Good morning, Mary. I know you're here too. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Elise is saying, um, hello, Nash, you missed you yesterday. I know, I missed you too. Um, and Jill is, okay, and Rochelle is saying hi. Yay. I'm so glad you guys put those comments in because um, what I should do is get, I have a little prop from my phone, but it's not right here at, at the table. Uh, and I don't want to get up and get it. I'll just prop my phone up somehow so I can see messages when they come in. Okay, so um, Friday morning, you know, in the old days when uh, when I was working a, a nine to five, right? When I was working for the state of Wisconsin, um, Fridays was always TGIF. I don't know, do people even still do that anymore? TGIF. Um, can't wait for the weekend to start. Yeah, it was, you know, and at the state, Friday was always kind of more 
of a relaxed kind of uh, day. It wasn't, uh, um, you know, like beginning of the week is really pretty hectic and really big push to get things done for the week. And But come Friday, it was like a little bit more laid back. Um, <clears throat> those are, That was in the good old days down in Madison. And uh, I, I see Mary... Mary um, Mary Anderson Fry isn't in the chat room yet. She and I worked in the same building there down in Madison. So guess what card we got today? And I have to tell you that um, <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at this. I it, it was, like I said, it was kind of hectic this morning. And, and, and a, in a good way, in a good way. Um, I had been contacted by... Um, somebody that was my client about 10 years ago, at least 10, maybe eight. Um, and, you know, we hadn't had much contact in the last probably five or six years. And uh, she called me this morning. I, you know, I saw her name come up on my caller ID. And it's like, oh, my God. And so we, we had a chance to chat and talk. And, and she's uh, moved into a, a, a new apartment and wants me to give her a hand with something energetically, you know, to go in and, and take care of some some um, lower vibrational energies from a distance for her, and and so uh, we're going to do that. Hopefully later today, I'll have more time to get that done. But you know, to take the time and, and chat with her was good. It was good to catch up with her. And then there was um, my husband who needed to talk to me about some of his stuff, and uh, we didn't have a chance to talk much yesterday. And uh, so anyway, it was it was a busy morning, but it was a good morning. It it was a good busy if you know what I mean. And when I had, when I wanted to sit down and do the card draw, I literally had to go out into a room by myself. I went out into the four seasons and I closed the door to the house. Um, so I could kind of focus, focus, <laughs> spent a couple minutes getting connected, grounded, um, sending love to grandmother earth and grandfather sky and feeling their energy flow through me. Right. And, uh, and then called in my team and ask them to uh, please show me what is the most important energy for us to know today for the highest good and that I can share with others. And um, this is the card that came up. We've had it before. The East Shield. It's about illumination and clarity. Illumination and clarity. You know, and, and um, I reread the, the information that Jamie Sams had written about this card. And if you can tell, you know, the background, that, that is an eagle. The eagle is a uh, power animal for the East and many of the uh, indigenous um, cultures here in, in Ontario Island, in the United States. Um, and the, the blue background, if you notice that we're, she uses uh, um, the medicine wheel colors on the images. And in the Eastern, uh, the Seneca tradition, um, East of the Mississippi indigenous peoples, um, we tend to use blue, and blue is is a symbol of the blue of the spirit road of being spirit. And so um, I love these cards; they're they're so pretty to look at. Um, so when I reread the information that Jamie Sams wrote about the East Shield. Um, I was looking at the the meaning of the card, the illumination and clarity, and I was thinking, how many times, you know, if I if I had even a penny for every time I asked my spiritual team to help me to see something with clarity, I'd have a really big piggy bank. <laughs> Would because um, con you know always trying to understand in an intellectual way um, what just happened or what is happening, or what did that mean? Um, I want to see it with clarity, right? And really, that that is the, the spirit of the East, the Eastern Shield. is um, It's about um, air, the element of air, um, mental aspects, the color yellow, which is a very uh, masculine color, the color of the sun, grandfather's sun, and um, the illumination part, you know, that in, in many indigenous cultures, um, the East is about um, where we greet the creator every day in the morning when the sun comes up. 
how we create uh, the creator is greeting us for a new day right and so the illumination and i had to kind of laugh to myself about you know if i had a penny for every time i asked to be to help me see this with clarity to see it with clarity or understand it with clarity and you know and my team usually does i would say a good 98% of the time um, the other couple percents is has more to do with um, they, they showing me something and I still don't get it. <laughs> I saw a meme the other day. The other day, it was um, it was this lady who, this woman who was you could tell that she was distraught on her face. You know, she was distraught, and um, and she was talking about numerology and she says something about um, about seeing the triple numbers. And that she knows her guides are trying to tell her something, but she still don't get it. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That two percent is that you know they show they keep they'll show me something, and I just still don't get it. Um, and sometimes I just have to wait for for time to pass in order to to really understand it. Yeah. So let's see. I'm gonna check the the chat room here. Um, Lisa saying we are here. Um, Stephanie, it's been a minute. Glad to be back. Yay. And uh, Judy is here. Yay, Judy. Glad you're here. Um, this is a little strange to use my phone all at the same time. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's my internet connection. Could be. Now I have a little thing up here that says 12 comments. If I click on that, there they are. In the live stream, I don't know if anybody has done live streams, but um, <laughs> on the right hand side, you, you have the camera and your preview, you know, for me to look at you. And then on the right hand side are all the comments. And it, it was blank. There was nothing there. And I knew people were out there. And um, <laughs> so here they are. I don't know what happened. It could be my, my internet connection, I suppose. There we go. It's good. It's good. Now I don't have to use my phone. And that also means I can drink my tea. <laughs> my phone was resting up against my tea. So the Eastern Shield. I love all those hearts, too. Thank you so much. Love that. So the Eastern Shield. When I'm rereading what Jamie has written for the Eastern Shield, there was a part in here that... Um, we had mentioned the last time, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time on it, right? And she writes here that the Eastern Shield is the place of illumination where Eagle lives. In this place, you will find the golden door that leads to all levels of awareness and understanding. The East is where Grandfather Son greets us each morning. There are three paths to the wisdom of the Eastern Shield, right? And that was, uh, the three paths was the creativity, um, the shedding of toxic things, um, thoughts and feelings and, and that sort of thing. Um, and the other one was the understanding of how to use energy. Um, and I call it energy allocation. So, um but I, what I wanted to touch on was the color yellow and the golden door. Um, because we really didn't get a chance to talk about that much the last time. And so if you take a look at the picture again of the card, you can see the circle around the eagle. It's in the blue background. And then there's a yellow ring around it, right? The color of the east. And that is the golden door. <clears throat> you know, she, she writes about the color yellow. And um, the color yellow um, is to represent the sun and that illumination. And then she said something about that the color yellow in, um, I want to make sure I get this right. It's not all Native Americans who believe that the color yellow is... Okay, so she is saying that the color yellow, when um, you're doing face painting, right, and um, 
you're, the colors are given to you to use, either by spirit or by an elder. And um, she says that when, and it sounds like it's coming from her Seneca tradition, is that they use three li yellow lines above the eyebrow, so across your forehead. And that denotes someone who is a seer, someone who sees into the future, someone who sees spirit, someone who um, is connected um, in that communication way with spirit, right? And I was thinking about um, how many people in Star Nation's community are seers, whether you do it as a teacher or you're, you have a, you know, like a practitioner, um, light worker, um, and having a clientele, um, or like most of us, is that you use it for your personal use, your family use, um, for friends, um, to tap into that, um, to be of service to someone else, right? So because many times, just because you're a seer doesn't mean that you see your own stuff. <laughs> I wish that were true. I wish that, you know, we could see our own things um, in the, our future um, in that way, but you really don't. Um, I think we're protected that way. And uh, so anyway, that's how they use the color yellow. And I do know that the color yellow is... Um, is is really about that clarity seeing it in clarity and my medicine dress is yellow that's that's the color that it was given to me by spirit and um and so it's it was nice to be able to sit there and think about that i haven't thought about that in a really long time um about the color yellow in the, the spirit of the east and then she goes on to, to tell us about the seneca tradition of that the east is the home of the golden door and this is where I would like to kind of spend a little of our time this morning is about the golden door. She writes about the golden door. She says that the door leads to all other levels of imagination and awareness. To pass through the golden door is to see beyond the mundane and to touch Father Sky. Riding on Eagle's back to the freedom of true knowing often occurs when one journeys through the golden door. On the other side of the golden door, there is no limitations, no hesitation, and no fear. Fear cannot exist in the presence of the golden love of grandfather's son. The golden door. And so the golden door is, is a portal to another dimension, other worlds. And this is what we were talking about last night um, in the closed group for the Academy um, about the shamanic insight about soul travel. And in the Seneca tradition, they go through the golden door. And when I was thinking about that this morning, about what that would be like to use that as the portal to go to other worlds, other dimensions. In, in the shamanic traveling, um, when you are trained through the Harner method, is what I call it, uh, Michael Harner's, um, what is it, uh, the shamanic, School of Shamanic Studies. Now he walked on, he, pa he passed away uh, sometime late last year. And, uh, but his school and his foundation is still running. And they're still teaching. He has teachers, uh, trained teachers who are still doing that for the, for the foundation. Um, but how they how they uh, train people is through the use of drumming, which is good, you know, the shamanic drumming. Um, and they go to, uh, when they travel, when they do the shamanic journey, they're going either to the lower world, the middle world, or the upper world. And um, you're trained to go through when you're going down to the lower world in the middle world, you are trained to go like to follow the tree roots down into grandmother earth or the, the rabbit hole kind of situation um, through water, through like a lake or a pond um, to go down into the earth. 
um, when you're going to the upper world, you're taught to go up the tree limbs or up the waterfall or you're going toward the sky. Okay. In this Seneca tradition, um, it seems to me that when you're getting prepared to do that soul traveling um, and through what they call dream time, um, is that you're heading east. You're heading east to the golden door. And to go to ask for permission, that's what I would do if I were going to do that, to pass through the golden door. And um, I have to say that when I was even kind of considering it this morning, I could kind of feel the energy pull, you know. Um, and for those people who trained with me for Awakening Illuminated Heart, it kind of also reminds me of when we're traveling down into our heart and you go through the sacred space, the larger space, the sacred space of your heart, and then you go to the tiny space, right? And from it feels to me that the tiny space of the heart is nearly the same as the golden door. Mm -hmm. It feels the same. And I won't really know 100% sure until I actually do that kind of uh, travel, going to the tiny space in my heart and, um, and listening. Because, you know, there's that vibrational sound there that um, um, your soul recognizes and remembers. And so um, I'm, I'm thinking that if I travel and go through the golden door, it's going to have the same vibrational sound for me, I think. But I won't know until I try it. Um, but my intuition is, you know, my, my inner child's going, yeah, 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 let's go. <laughs> you know, all excited about it. Um, and, uh, and so that, that uh, part of me, um, yeah. I think, you know, I have got some some uh, work to do for other people um, coming up um, to go do some journey work for them, and I might I might give that a whirl and see see how that goes. I'll let you know. But the golden door, I wanted to touch on that because there's many other traditions, indigenous traditions across the world that use something very similar. Um, in Japan, um, the Sami. They also have the East having something to do with a door, a golden door. And so it, I think it's one of those um, common threads, common threads that is um, connecting us. That's what I think. Wait, I need to check something here. I got to check my phone again and see um, about those because everything kind of stopped. See, I knew it. <laughs> I didn't see any more messages coming through. And, uh, yep. All right. So let me check my phone. Um, Elise is saying Mary says hello as well. Hello, Mary. And uh, Elise is saying, uh, where could you learn to drum? Well, let's see. You're in Michigan, right? Well, there's many Kansmen. She is in Lions. Um, she leads um, drum circles. It's a little bit different drumming than what I'm talking about. Um, drum circles are more social in nature, um, but they're fun. They really are fun. Um, so if you're drumming for shamanic drumming, there's really only one beat. <laughs> um, oh, I don't. I, was, I had my drum up here last night, but I took it back. Took it down. Um, when I came back up to clean up last night, um, I took it down with me. Don't have my drum up here. Otherwise, I'd show you. Um, <clears throat> Jill is saying, hmm, interesting. Ask the who's, permi who's permission to go through the golden door. You're asking the, the uh, spirit creator, creator's permission to go through the golden door. Um, and, I, you know, there, there could be, because I've never done it, Jill, there could be a guardian at the door could be and if there is um that's who i would make the request to is to pass um 
But if there isn't one, I would still ask. I'd still ask the creator, you know, for my highest good. For my highest good, may I pass and uh, to come through. And so, and then wait for the response um, and be hoping for a yes. <laughs> Uh, um, and Elisa saying, um, I feel like I have too much to learn to feel like I, I belong. Aww. Um, shamanic beat mimics your heartbeat, correct? Well, actually, it's no, it's a little bit faster. It's much faster than that. Um, I'm going to have to leave a drum up here, I think. Uh, uh, the, the drum beat, let's see if I can. Um, if I can do do it with my hand, maybe. So this is this is about the speed. So it's faster than your heart. It's faster than your heart. It's um it it is a beat that reaches your part of your brain that recognizes it. It's in the the ancient part of your brain that recognizes that drum beat and that speed. And I call it the brain letting go <laughs> is allow is, is kind of like relaxing, relaxing so that you can get to the in-between. Um, so you're not awake, you're not asleep. It's almost, it is trance-like, um, but it, that beat is very fast. So it's, it's, it's faster than your heart. Now, if you're doing a heartbeat, a heartbeat is very um, soothing, right? And it's a double beat. It's a double beat. Whereas the shamanic is, see the difference? Yeah, it feels different too, it feels different. Um, and so the heartbeat, um, the heartbeat is really when using a drum and drumming and and using the heartbeat pace is really about soothing, soothing. And you can still get into a meditative state with that. It's just that you're you're not in the in between. Um, and and for shamanic work, that's where you need to be is in between. You're not awake and you're not asleep. Good morning, Jocelyn. So, um, so the golden door, I, I wanted to, to talk about that a little bit and to share about it um, and see what, how you guys feel about that golden door. Um, cause if we're, because when we ask for clarity, if we're, we're in a situation or something's come up and you're thinking, what in the heck just happened? <laughs> I don't get it. Um, and usually, usually when that happens for me is means that I'm more in my mental mind than sensing and feeling it through my heart. Because chances are, what I've learned about myself is when I go, huh? <laughs> I don't get that. It's because um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to sense it only through my mind. And if I am listening, wholly listening, I'm listening with not just my ears and my mind, but as the uh, Hadanasani, I think it's the Anandaga uh, nation that calls it listening with my, my, putting my thin ears on, my thin ears. In other words, I'm listening to um, the spirit around it, listening with your heart, listening to the energy and not just the verbal words. But the, the energy of the verbal words, the body language, um, the, the emotions coming through. Um, yeah, so you're listening to everything and, and not, just, not just the definitions of the words coming out of the person's mouth. Because we, can, you know, we all do it. I'm sorry, but we all do it. We, we, and sometimes we're not really listening to the person. We think we are, but we're really not. What we're doing is catching bits and pieces and trying to formulate the, the, the question or solve a situation for them. And so we're kind of going ahead of them and, and only paying partial attention to what they're saying. Um, and so 
And I say that we all do that because, you know, so do I. I try not to. When I catch myself, um, I think to myself, I think, okay, slow down. That's that's not important right now. Pay attention. Pay attention to what they're saying. And and then I, I kind of zone into their their body language and um, the emotions, um, what their eyes look like. And I'm listening to them in a, in a holistic way rather than just listening to them through my, my mind. And, you know, here in the United States, in the West, that's what we're trained to do. That's what school trains us to do. Our formal education is to listen to to uh, someone when they speak is to listen to them intellectually. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's there's a place for that. Um, but it's not the only way. And when you, I think when you listen in a holistic way, we hear so much more. We sense it. We, um, we understand it sometimes in a way that we can't even verbalize it. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Um, Jill Conrad, does that make sense? Because <laughs> she and I, she's she she and I are going to have this conversation at some point um, about that. Um, okay, Jill says I have to confess I have never heard the sound of the tiny space, but I know when I'm there, and I've discovered at least one other portal once there. Yeah, you know, um, they say that that uh, in the training anyway, they um, Drenalo was he was taught. Um, by the Kogi Mamos about this part um, is that there's this this um, it's like a primordial kind of sound and that we can actually kind of try to replicate it with our own voice so that we can um, remember it we call it and we recognize it immediately so even though you didn't hear it, Jill, there's a part of you that recognized the frequency, the vibration of that place, which is just, I mean, it's the same thing, really. You're recognizing the vibration. Um, and that's why I sometimes deliberately check out. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I the, the Eastern Shield um, on the medicine wheel, that's where we begin our day, right? Um, that's where um, we begin our life, our physical life. Um, in the spring, in the spring, um, we're just being, we're just a baby on the maturation when you're going around the wheel, right? Um, due east, due east is um, June, I believe, June. Yeah, is June, right? Due east, and um, and so there's many many animals are born at the end of May and the beginning of June. Deer, birds. Um, this is this is a time when when we're just starting our physical life, and. Um, and it also begins our walk, our earth walk. And on the medicine wheel, we're walking from the east to the west for our life lessons. We're going from our head to our heart. And we're looking at how we master all of our gifts along the way. All right. Yeah. When you're going around the wheel, you're 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 experiencing um, nature's path, that that growth, the seasons, the winter and summer solstices, the equinoxes, and the crosswinds, um, and uh, you're also experiencing how your life um, matures. So you go from being born to toddler to teenager to young adult, all the way around to elder, and and at. Uh, uh, January, December, and um, you're heading into the waning years of your life, and you know that in the elder elder role, um, you're looking at um, transitioning to your next experience, um, and then you start over <laughs> in the wheel. So um, when you're when you're in the east, 
standing in the east and you're you're starting your your earth walk um your medicine walk yeah individually our our experience it goes from the east to the west so think about that the golden door other dimensions and if we're starting there um when we come onto the earth plane we're walking in walking away from the the um, golden door if that's in the east we're heading west that's interesting i just thought of that so you're walking away from it so in spirit because we are spirit in a physical body when we want to um, experience um, those other dimensions as a healer as a medicine person as a holy person we our spirit literally has to turn around and walk the other direction to go through the golden door now that's thinking very linearly okay it it doesn't really happen as linear as that but that is kind of the imagery that i have in my head is that um, as spirit in a physical body experiencing our earth walk our medicine walk here we're heading from the east to the west as a uh, spirit who also carries the medicine for um, to the holy person to do the shamanic journeys that kind of to be of service to others through that way um, we in spirit we turn and walk back east to go through that golden door interesting I think we're on to something here <laughs> It feels like it. Good morning, Jocelyn. Good morning, good morning. Um, <laughs> Jill's saying, I hope so. Okay, so <clears throat> Eastern Door. Let's see what Jamie Sam says about the application of the card. Application of the card. And for those who just kind of showed up or are, are watching the video recorded, this is the card that was drawn today. East Shield, Illumination and Clarity. Jamie Sams writes that the East Shield card represents a need for clarity in some part of your life. It may also mark a time of illumination when suddenly things begin to fit together and make sense to you. If you have been confused, now is the time to ask for order in your life. Order can be restored through making lists of things to do, cleaning out spaces. You know how to do that. When order is restored, you are then more receptive and can find clarity in what you need. The illumination of the East can also be asking you to assist another to find clarity. And when you're assisting another to find clarity, you could, you know, be sharing your experiences your life experiences, so that they have a way to to say, you know, um, to compare, not compare, that's not a good word, to understand the possibilities, the possibilities. And um, and so through your, your life lessons, you can actually help someone to get more clear. All right. And she also says that um, the East Shield marks a time of new freedoms that come from wiping the mud from your eyes and seeing with the eye of the eagle. Um, and so you can also call on the medicine of the eagle to help you to see with clarity, um, to see through their eyes. Wouldn't that be something? You know, there's a, um, here in Wisconsin, there's two places that I've been. Um, they're um, sacred sites. One is near Madison, or near in Madison is near the lake, one of the lakes, and um, it had. It's a place that has many, many um, effigy mounds, and uh, built by ancients, the mounds, and in that place there is an eagle effigy mound that is the the largest known effigy mound in the world. The wingspan is enormous, enormous. And I remember taking a couple uh, students there years ago. 
it, it's hard to get into now. It's owned by the state. The land is owned by the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, it's a little difficult to get in. I haven't tried lately, so it could be easier. Um, and I remember <laughs> giving tobacco and asking permission to, to be on the mound. And I got permission to be on the mound. And I could sit on the back of the effigy mound eagle so that its head was in front of me. And when I looked up, if you can see past the buildings there, um, it you could see you're, you're literally going to be flying over the lake and flying east, flying east. What does that say? <laughs> the eastern shield. The eagle was flying east. Yep. And another one in um, Columbia County, I think it is Gibraltar Rock. It's it's a state park, no county park. Used to go there quite a bit with my friend Teresa. And the first time we were there, um, one of the elders um, in our community uh, took us, Lynn, he took us up there and uh, had a thunderstorm while we were up there. Um, and when the storm passed, uh, we hiked up the rest of the way and it's the tallest or the highest, the highest point in Columbia County. And the view is gorgeous from the top. But up there, there's rock formations that are in the form of animals. Okay. So there's like a turtle and then there's also an eagle. And um, again, I gave tobacco and asked permission to get on, on the eagle. And so I got up and I was sitting on the eagle and that eagle is also facing east. But while I was sitting there, you're looking up and you're at, you're, you're above the treetops. Okay. And, um, and it had just rained, stormed. And so there was like, um, fog clouds forming and kind of wispy kind of blowing by and, uh, the thunderbirds came the, um, turkey vultures and watching them float on the thermals was breathtaking. And then when I realized when, when I was um, feeling the, the eagle medicine underneath me um, and we're facing east, they're again flying, flying to the east toward the sun. Um, yeah, I miss those days. I don't get to do that stuff much anymore. Um, I have to rely on, on memory and going back <clears throat> and revisiting those memories. Yeah. So eagle, eagle, eagle. Let's see. Um, Jill said, I know that that's a confusing. I like it. I, it's like we're starting more with more than what we know, but babies are born with a knowing. Yes, babies come in knowing where they came from, and then we tend to forget, right? Yeah. And um, and she's saying Eagle Effigy Mound flying east. The, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, um, babies, they, they are still connected to spirit and they see spirit. They communicate with spirit. You think they're just babbling. <laughs> they're talking to somebody. Do you ever, do you ever watch a, a little one um, as they're, they're watching something go through the room or um, they're laughing? Somebody's playing with them, you know, and it's like in spirit. They're seeing spirit. But I have to tell you that it happens again at the end of your life, we're toward the end of your life. Um, having mom here has taught me so much. Um, she um, sees spirit, and she always has, always has. But um, with being just turn, turning 99, um, and she's very close to spirit, um, she sees a lot. And we have a lot of spiritual activity. When I say we're busy down there, sometimes that's what I'm referring to. Um, a lot of spirit spirit activity down there too, um, yeah. And you know, and I, in our tradition, um, we use a lot of cedar to do clearings, where um, white sage is used a lot by other traditions, right? And so, um, <laughs> my house it smells a lot like cedar um, because. Um, I burn cedar for her when she asks for it. 
And when she asks for it, that means that she's been having a lot of visitations, right? And, uh, and she usually tells me about them. <laughs> and the other day, the other day I was turning down her bed, getting ready for the evening and, and uh, it was after supper and, and uh, she asked if she could have some cedar. And I said, sure, I can, I can do that for you. And I say, why are you, are you, do, you, do you have visitors? And she said, uh, she goes, yeah, she says they're, she goes, I just don't understand why they bother me. Why are they here? You know, and, and I was telling her about, you know, mom, you're, you're so close to spirit right now that, you know, of course you're going to see them more often. And, um, and she goes, yeah, but you'd think they'd be family. She says, they're not family. They're, you know, they, they, they wear uh, European clothes. They're, I can tell they're not, they're not Indian. And I kind of got closer cause she's, she wears double hearing aids. I said, how do you know they're not ancestors? And she's looking at me and I said, you know, your father, my grandfather had French Canadian um, grandparents. How do you know that those aren't your an your ancestors coming to see you? Not all of them were indigenous. And she kind of sat there looking at me. I thought, uh oh, <laughs> you know that mother look. <laughs> you still get them at fifty eight, and she's ninety nine. It was like, uh oh. Um, and she sat with that for a little while. And the next morning she was saying, you know, I was thinking about what you said. And I think that might be true. They might be my relatives. And I said, they are your relatives. I said, not only that, you know, um, that between you and, and spirit, it, the, the space is pretty thin. And I said, how do you know you're not in, invading their space? Because I said, mom, I believe that they're like right here. They're just in another plane of existence right next to us. And I said, how do you know that your that your energy is so is more in tune with theirs? And they're saying, there she is again. Somebody take her home. <laughs> you know, that you're invading their space. <laughs> and she had a good laugh over that one. And she goes, yeah, I never even thought about it that way. She says, maybe, maybe I'm the one that's traveling to them and they're not coming here. I said, well, that's a possibility. It's kind of looking at it inside out, you know. So anyway, I don't mean to ramble, you guys. Um, I'm going to read Jamie Sam's poem for the shield, the Eastern shield. And uh, we'll see what Jamie, I like Jamie as a poet. <clears throat> she says, shield of the east, illuminate my path. So I may, I may fly with eagle to the home of grandfather's son's first light. I like that. Shield of the East, illuminate my path so I may fly with eagle to the home of the grandfather's son's first light. Hmm. So as your day progresses um, and you consider the information that was shared about the golden door and the East shield, spirit of the East, um, take what resonates with you, what feels good to you. And what doesn't, that's okay. Just let it go. It wasn't meant for you. It's all right. Um, and just see how the energy flows to you, around you and through you today. Um, and how the information is either you'll be a witness to or maybe um, an active participant to. Who knows? Um, that's your decision to make. Right? Enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for the card draw. Um, and if you consider, um, I know t uh, Sunday is Father's Day um, at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Central Time. Um, I'll be having a live stream show with uh, Mervyn Kelly, and we're going to be talking about elder caring for elderly parents, and um, it's going to be a hard one, a difficult topic. Um, and we're going to be chatting about how we prepare ourselves as caregivers um, for our elderly parents' transition for their crossing. Because having them with us um, and caretaking for them from in our homes changes your life completely. And um, we were talking, he and I were talking the other day about how when they, they make their transition, 
how our lives change again and how maybe we could prepare for some of that change. Not all of it, but maybe some of it. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So if you're available, please join us. It'd be nice to have you guys in the chat room. So with that, have a good day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning for the tomorrow's card draw. Bamamina, until we see each other again.